Hey everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Shenmue Blind with me Rock Paper Mario and it's still Friday the 24th of May and I'm still your host here at ORHYJ Radio Station. <laughs> I was like Ryo Hazuki Yokosuka Japan Radio Station. <laughs> See, I never get that, because in America, all the radio stations, apparently, from what I've no learned from, ep like, things such as Frasier, apparently all the radio stations in America have names like WKCL or WC blah blah or something like that. And, like, I don't know, that's really weird to me, because here, like, the radio stations have names like Red FM and Lyric FM and Radio 1 and 2 FM and News Talk. Like, that's the names of the radio stations, which is like, so I'm not used to, they have like, normal names. So I'm not used to all these names being like, acronyms. Morning, you know? Man, we're not, I'm not going through this crap again. How many times do you guys actually want to see this forklift race? And me, like, say, hold on to your butt. Look, I can do it with something in my mouth, like this. Hold on to your butt, like that. Almost time to go. On your mark, almost time to go. No! That's not, you don't say on your mark and then go, it's nearly time to go. You go on your mark, go, get ready, go. Oh, jeez, I forgot to hold a work. Okay, let's try and win this time. I came so close the last time. Yeah, get out of my way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way, number four. Get out of my way, number four. Make it so, number one. Don't hit into the funnel. Yeah, 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 that's it. You nearly had me, number four. <laughs> make it so, make it so, like that video <laughs> that Alex showed me of Riker sitting down. I never noticed that he sits down like a freak before. <laughs> Guys, oh my god, you're being dickheads. Do you know what? I don't even care anymore. Do you know? That video of like Riker sitting down, like, and I never noticed it before, but he like totally just like walks over the chair and then sits down. It's really crazy. It's like he sits down in it like he would a horse or something. It's insane. I love Jonathan Freaks and Riker. But then like, but I must say, I, my, my fate, my heart lies with like, my heart belongs to Chief O'Brien. <laughs> Chief O'Brien. Of course it would have to, do you know? I remember this mad episode uh, where uh, I think of like um of Next Generation no not Next Generation of um of uh, Voyager where like which I actually like Voyager I know people like Voyager gets like gets like shit compared to Next Generation which I, which I like personally I think both Next Generation and Voyager are better than the original series and like I've seen a, a lot of that as well. But, like, there was this episode of Voyager where, like, I love the way I say, like, oh, I'm not going to show this, and then I start talking about something which necessitates me showing it. But, like, the, well, I wouldn't say talking about Chief O'Brien in an episode of Star Trek Voyager necessitates showing anything, but, like, there was this episode where basically Chief O'Brien was mad. Like, that was the whole basis of the storyline. He was mad, and he was having all these, he was, like, trapped in this, like, strange hallucination. And, like, he knew that something weird was going on, because everyone was acting mad, like, and he was like, what's going on? It was very, it was really kind of, like, Kafka-esque is what it was. It was that, it was that Kafka-esque episode of Voyager. And then there was this mad, like, two-part episode of Voyager, where, like, what's his name? Tubok. Or, <laughs> Tupac, like, Tupac. I always just call him Tupac. I think he's actually Tubok. Like, I mean, how could you not call him Tupac? Or Tupac and Janeway or whatever, and like there, there's like this, there's this. It's really cool. It was like a really cool two-part episode. It was to do with like Seven of Nine and the Borg, and the episodes with the Borg are always the best episodes. But like, well, some of the best. And like, there was like actually this. It was kind of like the Matrix, actually, I suppose, because what what it was was it, what it was about was that there was this like, there was like this almost like what you'd call it was like this this part of cyberspace overlooked by the Borg that they didn't know about, um, where, like, people who were, who were captured by the Borg, that they could visit while they were, like, re in their recharging station or whatever, 
and it was like a power like it was a place where they could have like their human bodies without like their Borg implants and stuff like that and where they could like have their old personalities gotcha. and stuff but it only existed in cyberspace it was like it was actually really like well I suppose it was actually the opposite of the Matrix actually it actually was <laughs> because like it was like they were escaping to cyberspace instead of escaping to reality you know <laughs> but like um then I take number eight cargo to warehouse number eighteen. What? Take yep. this. But careful, you don't get mixed up. What? The code is written on the map. I got it. Take this to eight, and then take eight to eighty. What? That's confusing. I'm, I'm gonna have to. I wish I'd been paying more attention. Okay, so where am I now? I'm here. I need to take that stuff to warehouse number eight, and then take the stuff in warehouse number eight to warehouse number eighteen. Is it? Is that what I'm supposed to do? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But yeah, like, the, but the Borg kind of found found out about this place. Um, found out about this place, and they were going to like get rid of it. But like, so what? What like two pa two pa? Okay, now is there something? If there's nothing in warehouse number eighty, no, there's not. Okay, well then, that means we're supposed to go straight to warehouse number... That means we're supposed to go straight to warehouse number 8. Okay, I actually know where that is since I actually went there. That's the place we broke into. But, um, yeah, so Tupac and Janeway got themselves, like, deliberately, um, infected... Got, got themselves deliberately, like, caught by the Borg. So they could infiltrate one of, like, the Borg's ships. Um... I, I don't know, like, I don't know why I'm explaining this whole plot of an episode of Star Trek Voyager to you. Okay, this is warehouse number eight, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, well, this isn't too bad. Okay, so I put these ones over here. Well, this is, this isn't bad at all. I, st I think I'm going to stick with going back and forth in a straight line. Because it just seems like the way to go. Man, they're really, like, ramping this up, aren't they? Okay, so the ones with red lines go back to warehouse number 18. I'm not going around that circle way. I hate that way that they try to make me go. There's also this really weird episode I remember seeing of, like, Next Generation, where, like, Riker and Whoopi Goldberg and Wesley were having this, like, chat about, like, women and romance. It was like, pfft, is <laughs> Riker? And, like, I love the way, apparently, like, I say that, like, Riker... It, like, I, I, I assign, like, I assign, like, Jonathan Frakes and Will Wheaton their, 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 their Star Trek persona. But, like, apparently, Whoopi Goldberg is just Whoopi Goldberg. Like, the barman in Next Gen... I can't even remember what Whoopi Goldberg's name, character's name is in that. But, like, I know she's the bar the bartender in Next Generation, is Whoopi Goldberg, anyway. But, like, I love the way I assign Will, Will Wheaton and... Jonathan Frakes, their Star Trek personalities, but the barman in Next Generation is just Whoopi Goldberg. It's not even a character being portrayed by Whoopi Goldberg. It's just Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> like, she was, like, like, she got an offer of, like, a job she just couldn't, like, 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 apparently, like, in, <laughs> in the future, Whoopi Goldberg is still going to be alive, and she's going to be offered a job of being like, of being the bartender on the <laughs> with the Federation, <laughs> and she's just not going to be able to turn it down. <laughs> See, like, once I stop listening to their instructions and just do this the way I want to do it, it actually becomes a lot easier. Like, it's just, there's no point in going the way that they want you to go. It's completely pointless. There was actually this episode of like the of Next Generation on the other day, where like the the Romulans and like this and this like it was really funny actually. There was the, the the Romulans and this like really dodgy Klingon had this plot to like beam like subconscious me so like like hypnotic suggestions to Jordy through his like visor thing. Um, did I just not pick up the- oh, it doesn't matter. While I'm here, I might as well pick up another one. Um, they, like, had this plot to, like, beam, 
like hypnotic suggestions to Jordy through his visor, so that he, to turn him into a killing machine, and they were going to make him kill this Klingon ambassador or something, to like start like uh to start like um war between the Federation and and the uh, and the Klingons, and like um. But, like, at the end it was really funny because Data, Data was, like, being a detective. It was, like, he was figuring out the whole thing. Data's the one who, like, figured out what was going on. And at the end, like, he, like, it was revealed, like, what, 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 what this Klingon guy was doing. And, like, they were, like, and Picard was, like, I'm sure if we search, if we search this, um, governor, whatever his name is, um, that we'll find, like, a transmitter and like and like and i request that we bring that we that we get dr crusher to like perform a search um of of him or whatever and then like the, the, and then like the klingon governor guy was like no i'm not like submitting to being searched by the federation like this or whatever and then picard's just like um and then the klingons like that that he was going to get killed were like well, I'm sure we can bring you back to our ship, and we'll search you. <laughs> and your man, as soon as he found out that I was like, "Yeah, would you prefer to get searched by Doctor Crusher or the Klingons?" <laughs> I was like, "I know who I'd pick." And then he was like, "On second thought, maybe I will get searched here on the Enterprise." And Picard's like, "I can't help you." <laughs> oh, these two. Our best friends. Bro, me, I'm gonna settle down and go straight. Jeez, good Get luck. Me a real job. Work hard and marry her. Man, you're really going straight. Marry? <laughs> More ways than one. Don't you know, Dio? Girls can get married from 16. <laughs> but to Goro? <laughs> no, there's a law He's against so getting married to Goro. <laughs> yeah, but. Oh, Goro. shucks. <laughs> well, bro, be seeing you around. See ya. See ya. Look, everything is getting wrapped up in a nice little package. That's lovely. I'm glad to see that, like, I don't have to worry about their future. It seems go- Why do you need to write that in? It seems they're getting married. What to remind yourself to buy them a present, is it? Where's Mark? Mark! Have you got any more info? Mark. Dio. I got some big news. Yeah? Huh? I overheard Tony and Smith saying that a lone Which ones are Tony and Smith? Which ones are Agent Smith? And I see. Be careful. Yeah. No, I'm co Yeah, we heard all this already. Um, let me see. Let's talk to you. Hey, well, looks like you've got the hang of... Yeah, guess so. Hey, Rio, how long you... Oh, I we talked to you about this. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Later. Like, where's that warehouse? No, I can't see. I can't... Pra Maybe, like, the old man will be in warehouse four. Which one is warehouse four? Warehouses one to eleven, okay. That's warehouse eight. I'm gonna try and find warehouse four because I've never kind of shown this like training and I, I want to see if like the old man will be there and I can spar with him. Because that seems like a good kind of like replace he seems like a good kind of replacement to practice the moves that you can't that you can only practice with fuku otherwise or whatever but i need to find warehouse number four there's warehouse number two three oh so it's just there okay let's see if he's in there i, I just got a comment like in between recording sessions like just a few minutes ago to say that um Maybe I can practice here. Where's your I man? I work on my moves. Yeah, okay. I um, lose my edge if I don't practice. Apparently, like, you can... Okay, so this, this is, like, one of the moves, is that. Is you just go, like, forward and YMB. Okay, could you get settled, camera? The other one is, like, forward YMB X. Forward, like that. And the other one is, like... What is it? Like, forward, forward YB. Forward, forward, like that. Like that. Something. Oh, I pressed R by accident. But anyway, that's like the big and small of it. Yeah, let's quit. Okay, he wasn't in there. I was kind of hoping the gypsy woman would be in here, but he wasn't. Um. 
Nice place he's got here, though, I must say. I like the decor. I don't think Otho would, though. He'd probably be like, Do you know Vermilion? Or whatever he says, I don't know. I'm thinking Celadon. <laughs> oh no, my chartreuse giraffe. 